The East African tradition of the Maasai tribe is to greet one another with the words Kasirian and Gera, which is Swahili for, so how are the children? In that community, the well-being of their children is the highest priority. If you are interested in participating in thought-provoking conversations about the well-being of children and families, please tune in every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to Fresh Start Today on 860 AM WNOV. Together, we can save our children. Oh, good morning. You're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show on WNOV 860 AM. The Voice with your favorite cousin, Bertha Jean's baby boy, Jermaine Reed, and my favorite cousin, Mr. Keon Jackson Malone. Good morning, cousin Keon. Good morning. What's happening with you this morning, Jermaine? Man, I'm doing good. Just glad to be alive in the land of the living with activity of my limbs, a portion of my reasonable health, and a portion of my right mind. I don't know. I'm just glad to be here. I don't know. I see you ran in here with your coat on your head but not on your sleeves, on your it's just, it's just one of them days, early in the morning. You know, I, I don't have it all together, man. I'm just... That just, means it ain't that bad outside. No, it, well, yeah, but but I'm layered. You, you know, cold. I'm layered. I have like three, four different layers on. I'm you, layered. You I got about four layers of fat. Look, one, two, three, four. One, I'm ready. Two, I'm ready. Was Whatever was constantly got the... I'm ready. It's February the 1st. Wednesday morning, Wellness Wednesday on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. I mean, we're going to have a great show. We have some folks coming to the breakfast table. We have um, Attorney Yang. She's going to be talking about uh, Social Security Disability. She's a disability attorney, and we're going to be talking about that. So some folks who may have some questions about that um, disability process or Social Security uh, disability process, you can give us a call today later in the show. She'll be here in probably about 20 minutes, so we'll be talking for about a half an hour to 40 minutes about disability, um, what that consists of. And then at the 8 o'clock hour, we have Dorian James coming in, and he's he's a CRT, uh, focuses on allergies, sinuses, that whole type of thing. We're going to be talking about asthma care on the show this morning, and folks need to understand there are some disparities related to asthma care and some treatment modalities, and maybe there's some natural remedies. I don't know. Maybe you have some information that you want to share about asthma care. Well, that would be a great time to do that around 8 eight oh five eight ten in the morning uh so we're gonna have a great 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 show but we first want to say good morning to everybody who tunes in on monday through friday uh to the ride and shine morning show to the man show and just a lot of the folks who support this radio station we certainly want to say thank you to mr uh gerald jones and the amazing staff over here at the uh wnov uh station for making these programs available to the community so let's let's see what's going on. Well, you know it's going to be a high of thirty three degrees today, a low of twelve. You will feel a west northwest breeze. Uh, that's going what, what fourteen miles an hour. The sun just came up at seven zero six, and it's going to set around five o four this evening. But it's feeling kind of good outside. Tomorrow is what Groundhog's Day. Do you ever pay attention to Groundhog's Day? I used to, but. I pay, attention to, I pay more attention to God's day now. <laughs> oh, you don't pay attention to Groundhog's Day? Because yeah, Groundhog, the Groundhog couldn't have uh, predicted this weather right here. No, every day I come out of the house, I'm looking this way, that way, you know, just make sure everything is copacetic, everybody's doing well. But um, let me tell you something. It is medication time. Now, listen, I got some really great listeners who um, provide me with some great information. Now, you often will hear me say, take your psychotropic medication if you need psychotropic medication. Not everybody needs psychotropic medication. Um, I also tell you to check your uh Take take your blood glucose level. Check your blood glucose your blood glucose levels. Uh, take your hydrochlorothiazide if you need insulin. Whatever you need to do under your doctor's care, that's what you need to do. And if you don't want to take medication or the medication are giving you problems, then what you need to do is have a conversation with your doctor and see what you need to do um, in terms of managing your health. But I often tell you that if you need to take five, do five healthy push-ups. This will be a great time to do that, or walk around the block. If you need to take a cup of coffee, whatever it is that gets you in your rhythm, gets you going in the morning that's what i want you to do right now it is medication time not necessarily some synthetic medication but maybe it is a routine maybe it's a book maybe it's a quote maybe it's a positive affirmation whatever you need to do to feed your soul to feed your health whatever you need to do to get in uh the rhythm of the day that's what we want you to do at 7 11 in the morning uh february the first now i got a recommendation from a, a a listener and she said maybe perhaps you all would like to Drink a freshly squeezed glass of fresh juice. And you know what? That's not a bad idea. So maybe you want to squeeze you, uh, I don't know. Yesterday I tried a, um, it was some type of orange drink, a wake orange, I think they called it. It had orange, lime, 
uh, carrots in it, and I hate carrots, but the drink actually tasted real good. Have you ever had a, a, a juice, a, what do you call it? what do they call them, juices? What, what do you call those things? Uh, I know they're smoothies, but then when you do juicing, <clears throat> have you ever tried juicing before? No, I'm a diabetic. I can't concentrate my sugars. Yeah, so that's what, the, okay. So you know, maybe one day we'll be having some folks. Um, I got a chance to stop by a place yesterday, Urban Beats, um, and I tried two different drinks, and, and I'm not really big with the avocados and the beets. You know, I just never liked beets as a kid. But um, I did try that Awake Orange, and it was pretty good. I may even go back and have another one today just because um, they say it's healthy for you, so I don't know. But um, there's a lot of juice uh, places in the community where you can go and get some good juice. Uh, the, the juice, what is it called, the Juice King or the King Juice on uh, juice 15th, kitchen? 16th, and North, North Avenue? The Juice Kitchen. The Juice Kitchen, yeah, mm-hmm. the Juice Kitchen. So um, I, I know they have a really nice setup over there, so if folks want to go get some juice this morning, part of your morning routine, then stop over there at the Juice Kitchen. Um, so, yeah, so she, um, this listener recommended uh, drinking a glass of juice, freshly squeezed juice, but also there's a book that she gave me called Food Matters, Let Thy Food Be Thy Medicine by Dr. Christine Northrup. So maybe you want to look into that and read about it if, um, if you're into um, food and, and how food affects your body. So let's see what else is going on. My, my quote for today is, don't fear failing. And, you know, the interesting thing about it, because, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, we, we fear not being successful. We fear, you know, making mistakes in life. But, you know, that's inevitable. And I like one of the quotes that uh, Michael Jordan said. He said that he's missed over 9,000 shots in his career. He's lost almost 300 games. 26 times he's been trusted to take the game-winning shot. And guess what? Michael Jordan, the great Michael Jordan, missed it. He said, I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. I love that quote by Dr. Uh, Mr. Jordan. Um, we're not always going to make the winning shot. But you know what? You will miss every shot that you don't take. And I forget who said that. That may have been a Jordan quote as well. But anyway, I just want to encourage you all that not to fear failing. Failing is just as much part of success as anything else. Uh, we can learn from our mistakes and just be better and do better the next time around. So let's talk about what's going on in the community, Cousin Keon. We have, um, I don't know, I was going to talk about this Florida pastor who apologized to his congregation after he got caught in the bed with the wife, Lord Jesus, and the husband came home with the little boy and drove him out the house with a shotgun and uh, Sound like a Richard Pryor movie. Man, th- this is this is reality for real. Yeah. And, and so and let me tell you about and let, let me tell you what his name is. His name is Pastor O. Jermaine. I wouldn't trust the anybody who named Jermaine don't right. trust him. You hear me? Cause I know some Jermaine. And they just write down tripack. No Santa. But but this is what happened. So they, there was a church eleventh year anniversary. You know, they praising the Lord, they collect an offering for the pastor, the reverend, and um after the service he hooks up with uh sister Clay Nisha. Clay Nisha. Yeah, I don't know what was going on, or the next day, something like that. But anyway, but anyway, so anyway, so this 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 woman's husband come home and he he chased the pastor out the house naked, right? Like and and a pa- right, but the pastor said that he was not going to charge, he wasn't going to press charges against the husband. Hmm. So something. you know, I said, okay, well, that's cool, that, that's honorable, sir. That's you know, that's that's good. Well, who uh, house were they in? At Clanisha, so the Clanisha house. And they actually was meeting, talking about helping little children in the community who were poor, getting them some clothes and some shoes well, and so they, on. Well, and they and somehow, no somewhere, clothes, I promise you. I don't know. Somehow they ended up in a room somewhere. He I don't gonna, know he where. He's not going to press charges on He's not going to press charges on the husband. But Clanisha, who's been married to her husband for seven years, has said she's going to press charges against her husband. How did you press charges? <laughs> I don't why have that. Why are you being an infidel? I don't know, but we all just need to pray for the saints everywhere because they got some foolishness going on. But one thing this pastor did, and I have to give him kudos, you know, because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This man has presented before his congregation and said, you know, I apologize. I was wrong. I don't want you all to have to go out here and defend me. And that is honorable because too many times I think, Folks just don't own up to it. And I'm, I'm thinking I was not, not there really. with the Eddie Long you know, you case. You what honorable is? What? What is honorable? Not sleeping with the man's wife in the first place. That is honorable, but he made a mistake. Or, or, or he intentionally did something. He was selfish. He, 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 he was wrong. And he admit, but we have too many people who can never say I was wrong. You, you know, we have double standards. You know, it's, it's okay for me, but it's not okay for you. So you have to give Pastor O. Jermaine Simmons credit. You have to. You got to give him credit that you made. He was, the, the, the nigga was wrong. 
that he was wrong. You don't have we to get admit it. it. He was wrong. He was wrong. But he offended a lot of people, especially yeah, when it became public because he was running down the street butt naked. He tried to save his space in the pulpit. That's what he, he, did. he may have, but he also realized he put his congregants in a very precarious, vulnerable position because yeah. everybody going to be talking about your past and run down the street butt naked. He don't get no awards for this action, this drama, this nothing. But God forgave him, so we That's got cool. We, yeah, you know, but he, the other piece is he said, I'm not stepping down. <laughs> That one president over in Africa did that too, didn't he? I remember years ago. Yeah. No, the other day. The one oh, the just, other day. The but was, just, yeah, he said, I'm, y'all done voted me out, but I ain't going because God told me to stay. He's God appointed me. God put him in there. You, you know? He's going and, and, and I'm just saying, you know, they're not perfect. You know? And I think that's the problem that we always set these folks up like they're perfect, but their feet are clay. giving these pastors a But pass. anyway, so y'all pray for them folk over there at the Jacob, Ch- at the Jacob Chapel. So, um... What else going on? Trayvon Parents. Trayvon Martin Parents. It's been five years since uh, Trayvon Martin was shot and killed um, in Florida. A lot of stuff go down there in Florida. And many folks believe that it was Martin's killing that fueled or sparked the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, but his parents have some concerns, and that's that President Trump will reverse whatever progress has been accomplished. And for that reason, both Tracy Martin and Sabrina Fulton are considering running for political office, according to the USA Today report. Now, let me quote what his parents said. Since Trayvon's death, we saw how divided the country is on these issues, and we saw how the country can come together. Tracy Martin said, you have those that are for uniting the country, and you have those that want to be a part. And what this new presidency does, it takes those that want to be a part, and it puts them right in the position where they can say, we'll change the laws, and we'll make it tougher. The only way we can be a part of the change is if we start with local government and we work our way up. So I just want to say, um, you know, I tip my hat off to both uh, Miss Fortune and Mr. Martin, you know, in their quest to keep their son's legacy alive and uh, his memory alive and to work to make the world a better place. You know, um, so I, I thought that was great news. And let me see one last thing I want to talk about before we go to break is that the Boy Scout of America announced Monday that it will allow transgender children who identify as boys to enroll in its boys-only program. Now, before you say something, Cousin Keon, Uh -uh. the Girl Scout of America, the National Girl Scout of America, um, they're not affiliated with the Boy Scouts, but they have accepted transgender members for years. Now, this is a situation. The organization said the organization said it has made the decision to begin basing enrollment in its boys only programs on the gender a ch- of a child or parent on the gender a child or parent list on the application to become a scout. The Boy Scouts had previously held a policy that relied on the gender listed on a child's birth certificate for those programs. For more than 100 years, the Boy Scouts of America, along with schools, youth sports, and other youth organizations, have ultimately deferred to the information on an individual's birth certificate to determine eligibility eligibility for our single gender programs, the statement said. However, that approach is no longer sufficient as communities and state laws are interpreting gender identity differently, and these laws vary widely from state to state. So what would you get ready to say, Cousin Kia? That's some bull. Now, why you say some bull? Because the world they is were, changing. They know because of the world is changing. Go have a gender scouts, a transgender scouts then. Well, you do remember that there was a lot of sexual abuse that was going on in the Boys and Girls Club yeah, of America. Yeah, so, so what, come, come on. So you, well, let's, let's, let's take this all in stride. You had I Boy started. Scout leaders, Scout masters, who were molesting and raping these boys for years. And just like with the Catholic Church scandal and the Black Church scandal, this stuff was covered up. So now the Boy Scouts of America is coming out and saying we are going to accept transgender fo- males. So I don't even call them trans- transgender male or transgender individuals. And you're saying that that's some bull. You remember the Blue Oyster Bar on Police Academy? Police Academy what? What's that? Any one of them. The bar that they kept bumping into. The guys with the leather on. Is that a movie? Dashboard. What? Police Academy? Yeah. It's a series of movies. I thought you were talking about something here on Titanium Street. No. Oh, okay, so it's a movie called Police Academy. Now, what about it? <laughs> I told you, I really don't watch TV, so what about it? I got you. That's it. If you're going to watch it, you'll get it. No, I'm just saying they need to have a have a transgender scout stand if that's what they're going to do. I mean, once again, I, 
this just exposure to something that you know I don't know. Especially as a child, you gotta, if, as an adult, I don't I don't know. I just I just feel like. Well, I, I wonder what folks and should boys who identify as girls be able to join, um, the Girl Scouts. No, that's what I'm saying. No, it should be a transgender scout. That way, everybody can be what they're gonna be. And but don't, don't, don't. How should that be approached? And how should this issue of transgender don't expose yeah, my yeah, okay. son or my daughter to, to nothing that they don't really need to be exposed to? But I guess they can do what they you want. You can see do. that walking down the street. You can see it. Yes, yeah, so I guess in the bathroom about, situation. If, if parents want to continue to assign their children up for that. I guess. I don't know. I don't know, but folks can call 414 now, now, your your president was supposed to be coming tomorrow. He ain't coming. And he might come. I, well, no, they canceled that. Um, Harley Davis was supposed to be hosting, but because of the fear that there were going to be some uprising or protesting, and I don't know where Donald Trump can go in this world at this point. Yeah. They hate like, him like Jesus. You he, hear me? He might pop up. He, you know, he might have just told you he was coming too soon. He might do some flash popping up or something. I don't know. But, you know, his his folks were looking for venues like the State Fair Park and other places. And I'm surprised that um, they gonna get him Clark here. or uh, Walker didn't find him some type of venue to, to, to say he was going to come and talk about the economy and, and manufacturing. So um, as the Journal Sentinel reported, on yesterday, or was it this morning? I forget, but he's not coming. Caller, you're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show. You have a question or comment? Yes, I had one, but I had to train it, change it over. Yeah, uh, Trump can come in town. Why don't you come right down to the Milwaukee County Jail where his buddy is at, Clark? Um, <laughs> <laughs> See, cousin, you get up in the morning throwing mud and stuff. What's going on? <laughs> you know, I'm going to change the subject again. You know, they talk about transgender. I'm not trying to be funny. Um, these are young children. I don't believe in transgender in no way. Somebody I'm interested, I want to hear the comment about we got to be diversified. We, no, we don't have to be anything. I'm not trying to be funny. Stop trying to make parents make their kids something they're not or because you didn't have a boy or a girl. I want to be a transgender, and can I play professional basketball or hockey as a transgender, or I want to play with the Green Bay Packers because I'm a female, but I'm a great female ball player. They're going to accept me because the world got to be all, all that now. Is that Okay. Can I, be a, can I be a girl playing professional uh, football? Is that all right? I'm just asking for the transgender of Kathy. Is that, can I do that? No, I can't. Right. right. So, so let me ask you okay. something. Kathy, wait, wait a minute. Don't run, Kathy. Wait a minute. You done threw a rock and now you're about to hang up on me? Kathy Don't do that. Nowhere. <laughs> Kathy, question yeah. for you. So, 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 I mean, these are parents. I mean, I was reading something or watching something on the social media. I'm not sure exactly what medium it was. But where there was this little boy that the mother was putting makeup on. And, and girl clothes on. He was about four years old, maybe. You know, so is this something that parents are putting on the kids or are the children themselves identifying with the opposite sex? Now, for, for Boy Scouts, which are not very big children, let's just get this straight. That's parents putting on that. They show parents make, making kids do different things and putting this on every day. You see pink and blue. Now people go to the store for a baby shower and it don't even matter what they put on them. Okay, let the kid decide as they get to be an adult themselves. Unless the kid was born, and I do want to get into this, as an Aphrodite. And they wasn't, okay? They didn't have the, the, uh, the genitals changed over from a doctor at a certain age. I know all about that. Let's get this real. These are parents doing this, okay? And they're ruining it for their kids because at one point, you follow those transgender for a while and see if they ever commit suicide as they get older. I'm not being funny. Have a psychiatrist come in and talk to both parents, really the parents, not the children. The children go wherever you want them to go when they're little. If I take you to the zoo, you want to go back to the zoo. If I raise you up north, you're going to like that environment up north, because that's where you came from. If I bring you down here, it's going to be a different environment from up there, okay? Because you, you instill that into a person. If I teach you how to read a book, you're going to learn how to read that book. If I learn a, a girl or a boy how to put on makeup, you're going to know how to put on makeup. You're going to enjoy with that, because that's what I'm teaching you, what you're supposed to do. As you so you're socializing them. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, they're socializing to what they want them to be. If that's the case, why are we going to teach anybody to read and write? If, if, if I'm, a, I'm socializing them to the real world, okay? They're socializing to the world they want them to be in, and which is really kind of sad at the end of the day. Let them grow up as what they, they're, they're, they're giving is, okay? Now, if I was a judge, I'd block all that because you're not going to join um, and go in a woman's bathroom because you're a disguised woman. You're telling rapists they can start coming into the bathroom. I can take my four-year-old boy in a bathroom with women so I can see what's going on. No, come on. No, 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 no. You are what your birth certificate is, and it'll never change. When you change your real name, they still give you another name saying AKA, and that follows you on your Social Security and on your birth and everything else. Don't try to be what you're not. As you get to be an adult, let them decide what they want to be, maybe at 14, even up to 18 years old. But don't you decide at an 8, 9, 10 year old, oh, my child wants to be this. 
maybe you should have your your rights taken away from that child and they re- reprogram you. That's unfair. It All really right. Is. Thanks a lot, Kathy. David, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. What's on your mind, family? How you beautiful people doing today? We are all right, my brother. How are you doing? All right. Now, everyone wants to. I want to write to the left out. Now, I want to say on this point, like, remember way back in the day, who was that tennis player that was a man that turned into, had a transgender thing that were named something? I, I can't. I, you, you, there's a lot of static in your phone. You said back in the day, what happened? Go ahead. Oh, um, there was a tennis player that had trans transgender that, that wanted to play with, against the women. They had a big old thing about that. What was his name? Renee something? I, I can't remember. A tennis okay, player. Yo, well, okay, way back in the R- day, R- this okay. when I was a child still in school, and this came up, and I was like, what? But then again, now, like 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 Kathy said, when I was a kid at one time, I wanted to be a police. Now that I'm older, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, things change. I used to like such a things when I was a kid, so I agree with it on that point. But now as a, an adult, uh, uh, older, when I was in the military, when they had this woman wanted to break the code of being in the all mil- military men uh, school, and they wanted to break that down, I was like, no, why they just don't make their own school, make a women's school for it? So the same thing for this, I, it's Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, they know woo 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 Scouts, you know what I'm saying? And then you put that with other kids who may not have. How can I put this without being rude? To me, I'm going to be rude. Well, if you're you, you going to put your kid with a bunch of regular kids, you know what's going to happen. Just like me being black, being around a bunch of white kids when I was little. You know what's going to happen. Okay. I mean, so so why create all that? Like she said, when you get older and 18, then that's when you can make that decision to choose or whatever. But also to force your thinking and your rules into a masses that might not agree or don't agree or may have other things or religious doubts and this and that and that and that. It's too many pieces of pie in there for somebody to have an equal slice. So I'm just saying, like, when they try to break the rule of the uh, all-military, it was military men in school, and they wanted to put some two women in there, then it was causing a whole lot of static and this and this and that. Okay, then, just like the women got their own professional basketball league. Let them have their own military. Let them have their own, what's called, let them have their own scouts so that then maybe they can discuss the the problems that they have or not problems or the or obstacles that they have, they have somebody in common to. But now if you put them with a group that don't have anything to do with them, there's more obstacles that's going to be for all people involved. So I don't understand that mission, but they're trying to be, I guess, and then I grew up in a time where, you know, at one time it was a, ooh, when my, my uncle was dating a white girl in Ripley College. Ooh. And you know, it had a lot of static. But nowadays, you look at people, that ain't nothing. You walk past it, it ain't nothing, right? But look how it was back then when it was happening. You made news, people was all up and static in your hair. Wow. But now you look at it now like, man, he taking a white girl. What? Oh, shut up. You know, they ain't, people walk by, even white people walk by. I mean, it's nothing now. So now I'm wondering if it's going to be the same thing with the LBGT community. Is it going to be the same thing with, like, Muslims or Arabs? I mean, we all got things that's negative to us all, but then later on in time, we were looking like, that's stupid. I mean, even the stupidest thing, like when we used to stand, when they used to stand out there and watch the Tommy Bomb. Okay, <laughs> <then> gotcha. they, <laughs> All right, bye. All right, David, thanks a lot for your input. We're going to take a break, and then we'll be talking with Clarence Sales. Please hold on, Clarence Sales. You'll be on right after the break on the other side. All right, it's 7.35 a.m. on February the 1st, 2017, and we're talking about the Boy Scouts of America announced Monday that it will allow transgender children who identify as boys to enroll. The Girl Scouts of America apparently have been accepting transgender uh, females for years. So we have Clarence Sell on the line. Clarence Sell, good morning. Hello, good morning, my peeves. Good morning, now, sir. What's now, on your mind, cousin Clarence Sell? Hey, what's it to do? Now, if I had to say anything, actually, I would just repeat what um, Big Keon just already said. I enjoyed what he said. Now, if I had to read about it, though, I would take the lady that came on after him. She went off into the um, social biological aspect of it, and that was wonderful. She needs to write a book. Probably she might want to name the book, um, How to Make Your Baby Not Gay. How to Make Your Something Like That. But, um, what you say you, that was, Clarence Sale? What you say, Clarence Sale? <laughs> So I'm giving the lady props to call in. I enjoyed what she said because she went up, up into the, like I said, the social I want to know what you say the I book should be called. What should the book be called how again? To make, how to not make gay your baby. 
Okay. Bye-bye. All right, cousin Clarence. So what is on? You? What up? What, keep talking. What's on your mind? Is that it? Thanks a lot. Shia, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. What are your thoughts? Oh, greetings, brothers. Um, I just wanted to weigh in and um, add some comments and some thoughts. Um, yeah, I think it adds more confusion. We have a situation in America where our children are being over-sexualized. Um, All right. And um, because this is an issue that affects our community because it's trying to change the values and traditions that we're trying to touch back to, I express to people before 100 years, if they look at history, nowhere on the planet Earth in history does a community um, marry other than man and woman. Even though you might have practices like in ancient Greece where they openly were homosexual, you know, women who rebelled went to the island of Lesbos, um, which is in the news now for getting refugees, by the way. Um, but, um, and that's where the word lesbian comes from. Um, it's not even about women like in women, it's about men banishing women to um, a place for not accepting them wanting to be with boys. But one of the things that uh, that came to me as it relates to challenge in our community is um, um, some high schools um, that have openly, you know, taken on that they're going to accept these behaviors, and um, teachers having issues, but they can't say anything, and they feel um, trapped. Um, where they even have to give up their own bathroom because the gay males don't want the transgenders um, and the transgenders don't want the lesbians. So it's like this, you know, these different groups are even fighting where they don't even want to have, be in the same personal space as other of these small niche or whatever um, characteristics you want to call, you know, call it. So I think it is as confusion and we need to get back to, um, uh, I like what um, Brother Clarence said a couple of days ago, the X and Y chromosome. You know, the creator is um, very wise well, well, to let put me things you. together. How do you think schools should handle this bathroom policies around transgender youth and children? It needs to be just like, um, uh, um, you know, um, I'm a father, and um, uh, um, I do have an older son, but most of my children was daughters. And so I always went to the family bathroom, which was for anybody, you know, that it should just be a bathroom. Um, and they need to just make them where they're not just stalls, but they just need to make individual rooms. You know, most bathrooms only have about five, four stalls or five stalls anyway. You just need to make those um, rooms bath for separate bathrooms. You know, if no, no, society you... decides it's going to go that, go that route. But I think the concern that some folks may have with that bathroom policy, you know, when you're talking about having stalls, what you call it, stalls instead of having the urinals, is that um, we have a lot of youth and children and children who are no, hyper- no, I'm talking about have separate bathrooms. I'm oh, you said so, okay, okay. It, I thought you were talking about everybody yeah, going to the same like bathroom. It's just one bathroom, and then whoever needs to go to the bathroom going to the bathroom. Going to the bathroom, the little washrooms, and so as you have little block rooms for multiple people and then you know construction start building that just the same way construction changed up for handicapped people the doorways went from you know um 32 to 38 you know so wheelchairs can go through and they start cutting the curbs so you know wheelchair you just start building into buildings you know the bathroom space okay see the other issue too thanks a lot brother shiar we have read on here the other issue is that uh, the Boy Scouts of America is a religious chartered organization, and so if they are a Christian or religious chartered organization, and they are, and they have been banning folks uh, based on their sexual identity, you know, how do you balance that against the fact that they will not allow atheists to be a part of that? Because um, now, now we know atheists don't believe in God, so. If they find out that you are an atheist, they will expel you from the Boy Scouts of America. So how do folks address that? Red, good morning. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, you, you know, my my thing is this, okay? Uh, uh, where do this stuff lead to, all this sexual gender? To, you know, I mean, we were uh, a country of, of decent people, uh, sort of starting out decent, you know, and, and and now you you know, uh, and black people, you know, we get our bad habits from other people. You know, if you want to be a guinea pig on black people, 
just throw drugs in the neighborhood, throw a bunch of clothes in the neighborhood, a bunch of shoes that rich people don't even wear, okay? Okay. Always to black people. You know what? I mean, where do, where do we get this stuff from? Uh, black people used to be decent people, okay? You know, we didn't do all that stuff. We learned we got all our drug, drugs from the white community. We got all our sexual identity from white. Now we're talking about transgender. Hey, listen, if they want to be treated better than anybody else, okay? All right, I, I, I mean, look, look, look. I ain't never seen a bunch of transgender people or homosexual or lesbians hanging on trees like black people in the past, have you? Okay, so we're going to sit up there and, and make a special thing for them. Hey, if they want to be like that, send them to another community where they just be by themselves, okay? Because we're not going to be sitting around here teaching our kids these sexual impurities and, and, and sexual ignorance. Because, you know, the worst thing you can do to a child is ruin their sexual identity, okay? And send them down a road, a spiral of, of, of disillusionment. You know, I mean, they, they, the kids, when they learn about sex at an early age, it sends them off to another area in their life, you know? So when I was growing up, I grew up in the late 60s, right? Okay. 70. Okay. And, and, and hey, we didn't. You know, I'm gonna tell you something. We didn't. We didn't allow none of that sexual ignorance around us. Okay. Okay. All right. I mean, you can't say that you believe in God and then turn around and and read about something in the Bible or the Quran and you see God is strictly against that. Okay. And 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 I don't understand people. You know, they say, well, don't judge people. Well, I tell you what. You, you know what? You deal with those people and just see how your community get worse, okay? Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Cousin, Red, qu yeah, qu question yeah. for you. And I know we got another call, but let me ask you this. Um, Go ahead. I can agree with some of the things that you said, and, and, and then I have to process some of the other things. But let, let me ask you this. Um, yes. Say you have a person in your family who identifies as a transgender child or youth. How mm -hmm. do family members support that child in their sexual identity. Support them. What do you mean? In what way? I'm I'm saying you know, if, if let's 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 take it beyond transgender. Say they're lesbian. Say they're gay. They're homosexual. Maybe I'm using the terms inappropriately. Bisexual. Uh, bisexual. Um, transgender. You know, they're not what you call straight or however okay. we classify. How do you support okay. that person who identifies with one of these populations? Okay, first of all, I would find out where did they get these ideals from. Okay. See, everything has What did they say they're born with it? I'm, not, I'm just saying this is their answer. I'm well, playing. I, know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, what did they say I was born this way? Well, well I'm, I'm just saying, doesn't everything have a beginning? Everything has an okay, origin. So, I agree with that. So, so you know what the thing is? Most of our kids, like I say, kids don't go by what you tell them. They go by what they see. Okay. So, you know, you've got to see if they've got some kind of friend at school done put that in their head or they see in some kind of television show or they're sneaking off on the computer uh, looking at some pornographs. See, like I say, you got to get your kids away from all of that stuff and, 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 and try to see, you know what's wrong with parents today? They too busy thinking about their sales and they, they're not paying attention to these kids out here. Okay. Now these kids, these kids out here are stealing cars uh, uh, they, they, they drive like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. And, and you say, how come the kids are acting this way? You First of all, you tell a kid, why are you thinking about sex at such an early age? You're supposed to be thinking about your career, okay? Now, 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 now since when we just, just shift all the way over to your sexuality and you're only 10 years old, why okay. are we talking about sex, okay? So, de so these kids are getting these ideals from somewhere. Most likely they're getting it at school or they're getting it off the computer, you know, because I know a lot of homosexuals that I've met in my life and lesbians. You know what they told me? What did they say? They said, hey, you know, you know, my friend approached me, uh, and then next thing you know, I was telling them that I was born that way, or I seen somebody on television, hey, what about the middle child? The middle child doesn't get attention like the older child and the, la and the, ba the birth baby order. in the family. Yeah. The so order. they want attention. Okay? See, it's a lot of factors, but they got it from somewhere. So, so, you know, so it, Red, it, you know, so Red, is that ahead. is that how you're going to handle a family member that you find out may be gay or bisexual? You're going to lecture them? 
and, and let me. Oh, def- oh, oh, okay, but listen here. Listen here.、Uh, since you asked a foolish question, I'm going to give you foolish, a sense of that. Hold on, that, Red, but that wasn't a foolish see, question see, because. See, hold on, Red, 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 but let, I, I've been listening to you. So, Red,、okay. I, have, I have a cousin that I've loved. He's my cousin's son. I raised him like my own. He's my、right. little cousin. One day, I just happened to find out that. He was gay. I found out all the rest of that stuff. I found out what happened to him when he was younger, when somebody was meddling with him when he was a little tot. You know, he explained all that to me. But how do I treat this individual? Do I not love my cousin any longer because I've been knowing him for 24 It's not a stupid question, it's a reality. How do, what do, how do you treat the individual、okay. in your family that, 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 that tries to talk to you and tell you that, open up to you to let you know this is me? Okay, now, now, see, first of all, I, I explained to you this, okay? You just said that they told you this, right? Well, I found out. They, and, and eventually they explained it. But the question was, how did you handle a loved one or a family member? I said, is that how you're going to love them? You're going to lecture them every time you see them, try to figure no, no, out where you, they got it from?、Okay, or do you, you continue to hug them and love them and let them、oh, okay, support no, 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 them and、no. let、you、them know? You don't do that. that. You don't do that. Look, at, you don't reward somebody for doing bad, okay? It's just like if your child was in school and getting bad grades, wasn't going to school, and you still had Christmas presents up under the Christmas tree. You don't do that. Okay? So I'm trying to tell you right now you, you, if you do love them, right, you go get them some professional help.、Okay? Well, you give, you give them the option for that. We have resources, we have, you, you get them that. But life no, is. You don't pat him on the back and say, hey, Billy, it's okay for this and stuff. You know what? You, you, just, say hell, you just say the hell with you. I don't talk to you anymore. I'm, I'm going to disbar you from my life. No, 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 no. Listen, I, I said this is what you do, okay? You don't have to get emotional about it. I'm asking. It's,、okay? a, it's a real life thing. Just、day. being logical. Listen, you be logical about the situation and you show them how to say, first of all, you're too young to be worried about your sexuality at a certain、uh, young age. You're supposed to be thinking about going to school and get, getting your life together because somewhere you took a wrong turn. And I'm not going to sit up here and, and, uh, uh, and try to pat you on your back and say, hey, it's okay what you're doing. No, it is not okay what you're doing. If you say you believe in God and you're on this radio every day, okay, so you don't, you don't sit up、uh, and say, hey, I believe in God, but it's okay for my cousin and nephew to be homosexual or、uh, what God has turned against. So, okay, let, 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 I let, even, can, can I answer that then? Gonna, I, believe in only, I believe in only God can judge me. Let, 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 can, can I answer that then? We're going to have to take Earl's call because. Okay, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Well, what I'm going to say when you talk about the Christian piece, you say we're on this radio every day and we say we profess that we're Christians, but then we say it's okay. What other people do is not my position in place to judge them. Whether okay, I agree with, whether, wait, 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 Red, whether I agree with them or not, my role is to pray for people and support people in whatever station in life they're in because there's things outside of gender issues and sexual appetites or orientations that folks、right. engage in that I don't agree with who are my family members. They may steal, they may sell drugs, they may be on drugs. There may be some moral issues, some sinful issues. I don't necessarily have to agree with them. My okay, role is to pray and support them. Go ahead. So, if a, bear, if a bear take a cub out into the woods, and if he d o n t teach him how to be safe without getting eaten by the,、uh, some, some other animal, see, God looks for、uh, us to be the leaders, not to remain dormant, okay? You see in that Bible and everywhere else that, that God、uh, killed all those people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, now that's your answer. I ain't saying kill them. I'm just saying、uh, this is strictly wrong and it's, and it's evil. And us black people, we, we ought to quit letting other people come teach us that filth and put it on our children. s And they own these gas stations. They got、uh, uh, porno magazines. I got, got you. p a r a p h e r n a l i a You know? All right, all right we got to make room for Earl, but I appreciate okay, okay, your call. Thank, thank you, you, my brother. You have a great day. Earl, you have a quick question or comment. I'm sorry、um, to rush. I know we're up against a break, and if you'd like to extend your comment, then we'll have to take the remainder on the other side. What's、oh, going on, Earl?、Uh, good morning.、Uh, thank you for taking my call. I could, I could not have agreed with the last caller more. As a Christian, you are put here to speak the truth. You are here to speak the truth to power. Truth never changes over time. God made two genders. He made man and he made women. True, true. His rule. So when I have a homosexual niece, or I, sh- I should say a lesbian niece, love her dearly. I don't think you should abandon people either. 
Uh, how do you love them? How do you extend love to them? If we're talking Christian principles, how do you extend love? By this show, all men know that you are the son, the children of God, because you show love for one. Can you show me how do you love your family? Correct. Well, you show love through example, and you show love. Modeling, um, okay. You show love through um, not accept, accepting their behavior, but you can accept them as your family member. And my niece and I are very close. She knows if she gets married, I will not be at the ceremony doesn't mean I don't love her. I right. don't agree with so her. So how do you support her in whatever journey she's in in life in a way that it doesn't compromise your values and it does not make her feel less than a human being? Well, let me, if, if I understand the question right, I, I go to the truth and I go to the Bible, and what I do is I tell her these are not Rick's rules or Brian's rules. These are God's rules. And at, at Sunday, I am going to ask to answer to him how I guided this young lady. Did I guide her on the path of truth, or did I guide her uh, to another lie, through one of, of the devil's Brother lies? Brother Earl, let me ask yes, you a sir. question. I, and I, I really appreciate this dialogue. Um, no problem. You, did you hear about this man named Noah in the Bible? Noah. Uh, Noah, yes, yeah, he built the ark. Remember him? Yes, sir. And right after the ark, he went and got drunk and had intercourse with his daughters. You read that in the Bible, in the book of oh, oh, that? There's Genesis. Some interp- there's some interpretations that take it that way. But, yes, I, I'm familiar with what you're saying. Okay, so, so what I'm saying is that God has a way of using all kind of people, and we all have issues in our bloodline. Oh, I agree. Rahab with was a Saul. harlot. Saul Moses was a liar. You, you, you know, I mean. David was a whore. And a murderer. I mean, so right. my, my thing is, I think we put, my, my thing is those folks who commit these sins, uh, we just talked about old Jermaine Simmons, the pastor who was caught laying hands on his parishioner and the husband caught him. I'm not saying that we can judge him now. Maybe, maybe his sexual appetite, maybe he is straight, straight, straight. So now we're going to say that the same God who is merciful to him is not merciful to these other folks who may have. Okay, no, well, no, just okay. because, first of all, just because that pastor was straight doesn't mean that it's not a sin. Right, I agree no with you. There's no difference between if you're married and you have sex with another woman outside of marriage versus a homosexual or lesbian having sex with another person. The Bible clearly states that there are homosexual people, lesbian people, but you're not called to live that way. All right, now hold on just one second because we've got to take this break. If you want to continue, then we'll catch you on the other side. Hold on. You're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show on WNOV 860 AM. The Voice will be right back. All right, so you're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show on WNOV 860 AM. The Voice with your favorite cousin, Bertha Jean Bay Boy, Jermaine Reed, and my favorite cousin, Mr. Keon Jackson Malone. And we've just been talking to the family at the breakfast table about this issue. The Boy Scouts of America announced Monday that it will allow transgender children to enroll in its Boys Only program. The Boy Scouts of America is a religious chartered organization. According to data that I looked at, the National Girl Scouts organization, which is not affiliated with the Boy Scouts, has accepted transgender youth for um, a long time. Now, l- let me just say this. The term transgender itself has gone through dynamic shift over time, but it's generally taken to mean someone who has a gender identity, a gender expression, a gender performance that is outside the expected cultural norms for their assigned sex at birth. Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. What's on your mind? Hey, didn't I hear that Valentine call? Oh, yeah, you did. Hold on, Dave. Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Hello. What's your thoughts? Hi, my name is Denise Crumble, and I just wanted to call in because Last week, you did a whole, almost a whole week talking about suicide. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of right. folk who, a lot of teenagers who are transgender or gay and African American commit suicide because of the attitudes that I've heard expressed this morning on this show. I'm 65 years old, and I want to say, frankly, I am shocked and appalled and all you young homophobes out there calling in with all of this judgment about people's gender identity and sexual preference. Okay. It's disgraceful. It's judgmental. And um, y'all need to do better. So let me ask you something, because this is a family conversation. 
Yeah, how do you say? Look, how do you say? How do you think that folks in our community should treat their loved ones who identify as being transgender, homosexual, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or from some? Well, uh, I can tell you how I treat my loved ones who are. Yes. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. I treat them like everybody else. Right. Because it's just, it's not that important. It really isn't. Are you there? Y'all act like you're talking about murderers and stuff. This is crazy. Get over it. Grow up. I appreciate your comments because, you know, at the breakfast table, you're going to have folks who have different positions based on their experiences, based on how they've been trained and what's been modeled. Go ahead. One of y'all. Every one of y'all got a gay cousin. And that is the truth. That is the gospel. That that is true. And and how do you look them in the face and express that kind of hate? Right. It's crazy. Because it's hate. That's what it is. Yes, ma'am. You know, I appreciate you calling. So let me, let me ask you, so when we bring these issues to the forefront, we have an open dialogue about it. Is it really that shocking, or do we know that folks harbor these feelings and emotions in private? It's elitism. It's like, okay, uh, I'm straight, you're not. And some of these folks calling in, expressing some of this stuff, are not so straight. But they're still homophobic. Right. You know, the whole thing is this, is that, you know, when you attack groups as opposed to talking about people's real behavior, it, it, it causes all our whole community to be sick. Because basically, when it gets down to it, gay people and straight people do the same stuff in bed. They do. You tell me, you're going to tell me straight people don't do the same stuff that gay people do in bed? Right. That's a question. Well, they probably do. I'm it sure they do. The same per- that may not be the same percentages, but and they may not try as much the same stuff, but they do the same stuff. In bed. And, and all the stuff about gender identity, what difference does it make? Come on now. Y'all need to grow up. You know what my role is, um, Ms. Crumble? You know what my role is? Is to bring the conversation to the forefront. I'm and glad you did. Huh? Because, you, like I said, last week you did a whole doggone week on suicide. How many of those kids committing suicide were gay? Right. Look into it. So look it challenges it. us to look at how we process things mentally, how we treat one another. What views and values we hold that maybe we need to reassess and reevaluate? Yes, you do. All right. So I, I appreciate you. I, I love you, family. Thank you for bringing your perspective. Thank you for checking us who were well, just. Thank you. All right. I love you, uh, take son. care. Now, listen, being transgender is not the same thing as being gay. Being transgender gender is about gender identity, the way people see themselves and the gender they identify with. Being gay or lesbian is about sexual orientation, the gender someone is attracted to. So I was just reading this um, from kidshelp.org. Listen, we have one more caller on this topic. I appreciate you calling, but we're going to shift focus after we talk with David because we want to talk about asthma care and how it's impacting so many folks um, in minority communities. And so we have Dorian James here. So let's take this call from David. David, what's on your mind? I just wanted to call back and say, Mr. Red, I'm very disappointed in you, man. You may be trans. You Nobody asks a stupid question. No question is ever stupid because that tells you the person might want to know. He's inquisitive, want to know, or he don't know, and he's trying to inquire the information. And for you to be an elder or a teacher or to try to give information, you can never say that. And then number two on top of that, yes, we all have family members that are that. And I love my cousin because when I look at him, and I look at her, I got four or five of them. When I look at them, I just see from when we grew up, they, they, my family, I love them. But now, just like the other person said, I love you and I'm not going to attend your wedding or, 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 or praise what you do wrong. But that's their life. 
But if my cousin come to me and ask me for any kind of other kind of help or whatever pertaining what I don't like, man, they got it. They got it. That's, that's my cousin. Family. That's my they, family. That's right. They family. That's blood. I appreciate that, and, I, and I'm glad that we're having these open, honest dialogues and conversation because we, we just typically don't have these conversations in the public, and I think they're really important, and Denise Crumble was absolutely correct. Last week, you know, we did a whole series on youth who are con- committing suicide, and we know that um, young folks are identifying with these various populations, and a lot of them are suffering from depression and other mental health illnesses, um, issues, and they're feeling isolated and folks are judging them and looking down. And, and we have to reassess, you know, how we treat folks and how we love folks, especially if we're identifying with being Christians or what have you. We got to really look at how we relate to folks. Dorian, you are here and you're going to talk about asthma. Yes, sir. Asthma, asthma. I need a breathing treatment right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty hot some, topic. I need a breathing treatment. Hot topic. But sir. I'm glad you're here because um, th- this is a th- this is Wellness Wednesday, and we're talking health, you know, and you know, there's mental health, there's emotional health, there's physical health, there's spiritual health. So we just want to do a health check this morning. How are you doing? Very good, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Can you talk about what organization you're from, and um, what is it you do on a day to day basis around so, asthma care? I'm with the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center. I'm the clinic director. I'm a respiratory therapist and a certified asthma educator as well. And what we do is the evaluation of not just asthma, but any type of respiratory disorder or difficulty. We also evaluate and manage allergies as well. And so we'll we'll kind of look at what that relationship is between allergy or and asthma, but let me, let me ask you this. Um, what is asthma? First of all, let's just start right there. What is asthma? So a lot of people, uh, if patients that I've had, you ask them what asthma is, and they'll tell you it's coughing, it's wheezing, it's shortness of breath, and it's chest tightness or chest discomfort. Those are actually the symptoms of asthma. What asthma is is a chronic inflammatory disease of the lungs, which means your lungs are inflamed or swollen, and that causes extra mucus or phlegm to be produced. There's muscles around the airways that squeeze and tighten up. And so that's what produces the symptoms that people experience. So now, in the United States, the burden of asthma actually falls disproportionately on blacks and Hispanics. And it was like, um, did I read something correctly talking about that with Hispanic or Latino population, uh, asthma is like 80 times higher than white folks? And so statistically, average American uh, in America, the prevalence of asthma is about 10%. In minority and low-income communities, it can be up to 25%. And in certain zip codes, like in Milwaukee, it can be high as 33%. So not only do minorities have a much higher prevalence rate, but also has the highest medical resource utilization rate, which means um, the higher frequency of emergency room visits, of urgent care visits, inpatient hospitalizations. Mm -hmm. But also deaths, though. And all the way up to their demise. Black folks are, are three times higher at risk of dying from asthma than than white folks. And, I mean, that should be concerning. And and more African-American women die from it than, I think, what I read was in any other age group or any other group. So why is that? And so, yes, it should be concerning. It should be concerning to our health care system. It should be concerning to our insurance why, why, providers. Why us? Why every time some disease come up, <laughs> we're, we're at greater risk? That's what I don't understand. You're talking about lung, prostate cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer. Black, what's going on? And so when you look at risk factors, the primary risk factor for developing asthma is through genes. It's hereditary. It's very hereditary. Okay, it's very hereditary. genetic. Okay, genetic. However, your environment plays a significant role in the development of asthma as well. And so when we look at minority communities, Hispanic, African-American, we can say there's a genetic role. But when we look at low-income, 
Now we're looking at how the amount okay. of money you make. Plays what into does money have to do with me not being able to breathe over here? Because that's the case. We all <laughs> got some asthma going on. OK, and I have so, chronic asthma. Matter of fact. And so what they found in low income communities is the environment that is a part of that economic structure. OK. And so that environment Typically, when you have a very dense community, especially when you have close proximities, when to folks living on top of each other, on top of each other, okay. close proximities Milwaukee. to expressways. If you yep. go down Forty Three and you go North Avenue and Capitol Drive, there are houses right there on the expressway. But once you get out to Good Hope and you start, getting, we got houses on the expressway. House. We got houses in the alley. We got we just have houses and everywhere. So there's also other factors where there's a high concentration okay. of what we call what would be triggers for the development of asthma. One of the most prevalent ones are cockroaches. Cockroaches carry a protein that when inhaled when a mother is pregnant or with the newborn, inhaling these proteins from cockroaches from animal down, especially cats. So we have a lot of mice in the homes, and so we bring the cats in to uh, get rid of the mice. And so we're bringing in a lot of exposure. So this is called we're, the allergens. These are, these are you, if you develop an allergy to them, but this is a trigger. Oh, these are the triggers. Okay, so we're talking about cockroaches. We're talking about mice feces. Mice and uh, dander from. The cats. From the cat and from the mouse hair as so well. So we know tobacco smoke. And that is one of the big ones is that there is an association between income level, education, and smoking as well. And. There is a lot of smoking in our community. We grew up in homes where mom and dad smoked. They brought aunts and uncles over. Everybody's in the house smoking. Kids are running around. Nobody's even thinking about that. Those kind of habits still continue today. And so, so those are behavioral factors. And those, and so there are behavioral factors, and then there's environmental factors. Is and then it's genetics. So we're talking about genetics, environmental, and behavioral. Okay, exactly. got you. So I'm exactly. learning. I'm in school today. Okay, exactly. so we're talking about asthma care and how it disproportion- disproportionately impacts communities of color greater than anybody else. So we're going to talk about risk factors. We're going to talk about symptoms. We're going to talk about these triggers. And so far, you identify cockroaches, mice, um, the dander from pets, smoking, uh, and gas the- range is whatever that from um, what you call it, electric. Stove range versus a gas range, a gas range. So what is it about the gas range? Well, gas will put particles in the air that when you're inhaled. So as an infant and even prenatally, while you're still inside of mom, your lungs are still developing. Oh, wow. And so what you can do is you can alter that natural development of the lung tissue by inhaling not just chemicals, gases that can come from a gas range, cleaning chemicals. We like the smell of bleach, pine salt, and fabuloso, ammonia. Um, that fabuloso for, smells so good. Fabulous. <laughs> smell, fabulous. Okay. You know, and so when you are using these products around different air fresheners, you know, you, you're putting very toxic chemicals mm. in the air. And so infants, very small children, as their lungs are developing, continually to inhale not only these particular products, but then the amount of exposure to gas exhaust wow. from that proximity to uh, 76th Street, Capitol Drive. It's not an expressway, but it may as well be. You know, if you look at the volume of traffic, but you drive through Thienesville and the speed limit is so 25 about, miles an hour. So you're talking about pollution. And so pollution has a definite impact uh, on high pollution days. But, but I want to go back to a, a pregnant mother who's carrying a fetus and the baby is developing on the inside of the fetus is developing and her cleaning or cooking at a gas range stove. I mean, because that's a huge educational piece for me. And if folks would like to call and maybe you know something about asthma, you have a question about asthma, call 414-444-5250, 414-444-5250. You're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show on WNLV 860 AM. It is Wellness Wednesday. We have at the breakfast table, we have James no, Dorian James, who is a certified respiratory therapist with the Allergy, Allergy asthma, asthma, and, and sinus, sinus center. center. All right. And so let's go back to that. You know, mom is just trying to clean the house. She just, we can't have a nasty, filthy house. But she's pregnant. I mean, what precautions should she be using to protect the development of her fetus or her young children who lungs are? So at our clinic, um, we've got an 
some a number of specialists, uh, and they can or we can provide the information that could not only help to decrease the exposure that might increase the risk of developing oh, right. asthma for toxic gases like that, uh, but also decrease the risk of developing allergies. And allergies and asthma are very closely associated because of their genetic link. But education is the key, and it's exactly what you're talking about. How is someone supposed to know? There's a number of green cleaning alternatives okay. that can be used that doesn't give the negative impact that you would get with these strong chemicals. And one of the things that we grew up in our community that, you know, if, if one is good, then two is better. So we might mix a little bit of bleach with our dishwashing liquid, or okay. we might mix a little bit of the fabulosa with the ammonia so we can get it extra clean. You know, we're trying okay. to stir. And so we're actually... Concoction we, is what we call it. Yes. So, <laughs> we go get this And, and so clean. we're creating toxic films mm. that not only can injure the fetus or right, the right. newborn baby, but our very own lung tissue. But your very own lung Wow, this is really informative. I am learning at the breakfast table or the Rideside Morning Show about asthma, the triggers, and there's genetics and environmental and behavioral factors. Now, according to the Center for Disease Control, there's approximately 23 million folks who are living with asthma, 17.7 million adults, 6.3 million uh, children, according to 2014 stats, and approximately... 3,651 folks died in 2014 from asthma. Um, according, again, to the same source, each day 10 Americans die from asthma. But that, that's, that's, that's concerning because out of those 10 folks who are dying, a large percentage of them exactly. are African American and or Latino. So we have Mary on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Good morning, Dorian. Good morning. Good morning. Listen, I'm wondering, can a child be born with asthma? Yes, so absolutely. Because of the genetic nature, if you have one parent who has asthma, you have statistically about a 40% chance of that child developing asthma. If both parents have asthma, that goes up substantially 60, 70, 80%, especially if one of the parents have asthma and or allergy as well. How can you... So, so nice. that's a great Thank question, you. Mary. So, so Dorian, how can a person tell if they have a newborn that this child is not just crying because they're, you know, they're hungry, but they're crying because they can't breathe? How can you tell? Well, one of the things you cannot do is test the baby to see if they have asthma. Okay. However, what you can do is you can look for the symptoms of having respiratory difficulty. Talk to me. Now, if we're going to determine whether or not we're going to try to diagnose a baby with asthma, and a lot of pediatricians and physicians don't want to make that diagnosis, one of the things that we can look at, do you have symptoms that are consistent with asthma? So if that baby has difficulty breathing, we can notice by their nose flaring, by their muscles in their chest retracting, their stomach sticking out. We can tell this baby's working hard to breathe. First, and then the second thing we'll look at is, does one or both the parents, do they have asthma? And then the third thing that's going to be the most important factor, if we apply an asthma medication to this baby and it relieves the symptoms, then we're going to most likely, and whether we call it asthma or not, it's not as important as how we're going to treat it. Asthma medications really only work on asthma. Okay. So if you have shortness of breath and you have trouble breathing because you have a heart condition or something else is going on, giving you an asthma medication is not going to fix that. But if the source of your problem is because you have what we call reactive airways, then if you respond to an asthma medication, the most prevalent one is albuterol, if you respond to that, then that's going to give us every indication that most likely that's what it is. Okay. And I also want to say when we go back to some of those genetic behavioral or environmental condition from mm -hmm. an environmental standpoint, um, the use of a humidifier can trigger asthma it's from what I read. What do you say about that? The use of a humidifier is not nearly as essential to the role of development of asthma. Not developing, but can it trigger? I mean, if you already have asthma, can it trigger an attack? And that's well, the only thing about a humidifier mm -hmm. is that if you're using it at a time like in the summertime, if you're using it at a time where we have high humidity, humidity is a trigger for asthma because it's extra water or moisture in the air makes the air 
heavier. So if you're using a humidifier in the wintertime, you want to keep it around 50% and you're okay. Okay. But if you have a lot of humidity in any environment, indoor or outdoor, that absolutely is a trigger, which is why people have a lot of trouble in the summertime with their asthma, not because of the heat, but because of the humidity. Got you. Now, now listen, uh, folks are listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show on WNLV ACC AM, The Voice, and we're talking about Asthma Care 101. It's prevalence in the African-American as well as the Hispanic Latino community. And so we have in the studio with us today Mr. Uh, Dorian James, who is from the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center. He is a certified respiratory therapist. My question uh, for you is, you know, we have a lot of children who are overweight, um, obese. We have a lot of folks in our community who are obese. So what is the connection between obesity or being overweight and asthma? Mm -hmm. So now we're talking about which came first, you know, the chicken or the egg. And so there's a now, lot. What about of, the big baby? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of studies being put into this. So if you are a child with asthma and you're overweight, are you overweight because your asthma has restricted your propensity for any type of physical activity. Because if you have asthma symptoms when you're running, running, exercise, exertion is a trigger for asthma. And if you find that when you're running and playing and exerting yourself that you have asthma symptoms, well, one way to avoid those asthma symptoms is not to exert yourself, is not to run and play. And then that can lead to more of a sedentary mm, lifestyle. Right, right. You get all these different screens right in the palm of your hand so you can play the video games, you can watch the videos. And so you may look at a more sedentary lifestyle that might lead to an increase in weight. However, then there are kids who don't have a predisposition for asthma that are overweight, and they develop asthma, and they look at that, is that a consequence of your lungs not getting the normal expansion and exercise that it needs to have? And I certainly don't mean to get off topic, but we see obesity on the rise in Children, we see right. things in children that we've never seen before. Diabetes, you know, in our eight and nine and ten year olds. High blood pressure, you know, in our eight and nine and ten year olds. And wow. so I think is that diet you know, related? I mean, because so it's a combination all, because there is a correlation between diet and asthma. And there's oh, absolutely right. And as a part of that environment, when we're talking about low income, when you know the term well, food deserts, where you know the closest corner store only has, you know, it's got the snacks and the Cheetos and the, and you can't get to a pick and save or you can't get to a Whitman's and you can't get healthy food. Right, right. And we got the one dollar value meals at Wendy's and McDonald's and uh, there's been studies when they McDonald's they did one over in Africa and in an area where there was no fast food restaurants at all they put a McDonald's up and the incidence of asthma increased 33 percent in that particular area. Well, you know we're going to take a break, uh, uh, Dory, and then when we come back. We'll continue this piece around the correlation between diet and asthma. You know, and maybe perhaps are there any natural remedies? You know, or do you have to take these synthetic medications to control and manage asthma? So we'll be right back on the other side. Uh, you listen to the Rise Time Morning Show. Stay tuned. Ah, oh, you're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show, WNLV 860 AM, The Voice, with your favorite cousin, Bertha G's baby boy, Jermaine Reed, and my favorite cousin, Mr. Key, I just below. It's 823 in the morning, and we have Dorian James from the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center in the studio. He's a certified respiratory therapist, and he's here educating us about asthma. You know, what can we do? Now, let's talk about attitudes, because sometimes you can be deathly ill with an illness. Your parent don't recognize the severity of it. And you're just talking about how a kid can be in Walmart, barely can walk, barely can breathe, about to pass out. And the parents say what? Walk it off. Walk off the asthma attack. Where else do they say that? They say that <laughs> right here on East Capitol. They say it in the schools. They do they really? When they're in gym, they don't know, is this kid how Are you faking it? Oh, wow. They say it on the football field. So what should you do if you're having an asthma attack? How can a person recognize it for themselves or a parent can recognize it? And, get, and what should the response be? One of the things that kids can be conditioned to understand is that every time I start to have trouble breathing and I tell an adult, 
and they tell me to go sit down somewhere, the next time I have trouble breathing, guess what? You're not going to know. And what happens is this is a thing called tolerance or acclimation. Oh, wow. Over a period of time, the child may be having some difficulty breathing, and I talk to parents and kids, I've had them in all the time. And the, I'll be telling the kid, you know, eight, nine, ten years old, I was like, you, you have trouble breathing when you're out playing with the other kids. You probably got to stop and, and catch your breath sometimes. And you and, and the parent, it's the first time that they've heard that. Wow. You know, that, that's really interesting how uneducated. But you've talked about the significance of these emergency visits, you know, um, emergency room visits and asthma and how that the physicians in the ER underappreciate the visit. So what are the dangers around that? What should we be concerned about? It's not just the physicians in the emergency because the physician's job in the emergency room is to get you out of there. So when you go for an emergency room visit. As a result of an <laughs> asthma yeah. attack or uh, well, respiratory for, distress. Whatever you go to the emergency room, their job is to stabilize you as fast as they can to get you out of there. That means you're either going to leave and go home or you're going to get admitted to the hospital. But their job is to get you out of that emergency room. All That's right. their All job. Right. That's okay. the entire job of the staff. And emergency care is something that we relied on. Every time my child is having a lot of difficulty breathing, I'll run and I'll take them to the emergency room. And using the emergency room, there's a couple of things that they'll never tell you about using the emergency room. And one of the things that they'll never tell you about using the emergency room is every time you go to the emergency room, that there's a measure of lung function that you're going to lose that you're never going to get back. One of the other things so that, that what you, you talking about? You're talking about I'm dying. What are you talking and about? so what happens over a period of time when you keep having asthma attacks, the structure of your lung changes and it doesn't come back to completely normal to where you started. Now, the first few asthma attacks, it's not going to be anything significant, but over a period of time, having these frequent and repeated wow. asthma attacks can cause a damage to your lungs that can be irreversible. Another thing they'll never tell you when you go to the emergency room is that every emergency room visit does not guarantee that you go home or you go to the hospital because we lose people. People die. Every time you go to the emergency room, it's a loss of control of your asthma. And anytime you have a loss of control of asthma, you have the potential of losing your life. Mm. But they will never tell you that when you go to the emergency room. So most asthma is in primary care. 70 80% of asthma is in our primary care provider's office. A primary care provider office, then, if you don't recognize the complexity, the seriousness of this condition, because you've got to determine how I'm going to manage this person in the wintertime when it's cold, when we have cold and flu season, versus the springtime if they have allergies when we not only have all of our trees grasses and pollens out but you get up in the morning it's 40 50 degrees that afternoon is 70 or 80 that night is so then weather changes are something that is going to impact asthma and then i'm going to have to manage them through the heat and humidity of the summer and then we're going to circle back around to the fall and the beginning of the school year so Asthma in Milwaukee is something that you have to really appreciate the differences that people are going to experience depending on what type of asthma they have and what their triggers are. But can, can um, the climate and the temperature in your home trigger asthma? Because I've noticed that mm-hmm. around 11 o'clock or around midnight, I have trouble breathing, or I used to every, every so often, you know, um, and if I get cold, then I have problems with my breathing. So is there something around temperature or climate that uh, impacts? And so sometimes we may run the heat in our home so it feels a little tropical. Sometimes I'd be wheezing (laughs) and sound like I'm... (laughs) So so that much heat uh, makes it very difficult. It would make it a bit difficult for someone to breathe who doesn't have asthma. So you can imagine that if... And with asthma, it's just that your lungs are more sensitive. They're what we call hypersensitive or hyperreactive. So something that bothers somebody else's breathing that doesn't have asthma, if you do have asthma, then that level of bothersome becomes that much more intense. And one of the most sensitive triggers for asthma is nighttime, that just the time of day is something that can trigger your asthma. And so between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. is when our lung function is at its lowest, and if you don't have asthma, you'd never know that. But most asthma attacks 
that occur at night. They occur between 2 and 4 a.m., a lot of the hospital or ED admissions. And a lot of the deaths uh, from asthma occur when those asthma attacks start in the middle of the night. So what should the conditions, how do you manipulate your environment if you have asthma and what you're saying that between 2 and 4 a.m. is when folks have the most problems with their breathing? Well, that's not an environmental influence. That's, that's environment. the influence of how our body clock Regulate. is kind of regulated, circadian rhythm kind of thing. And so asthma is something that you control at all times. You control it at nighttime, you control it when you're at school, you control it when you're playing sports. And we have to look at a uh, number of professional and Olympic athletes that have asthma. Our own Eddie Lacy, you know, he has to use his inhaler before he plays the game. Jackie Joyner Kersey won six gold medals in track and field. You so know? you can still and be so, engaged and active, it's just that you have to be careful. Or- well, it's not that you can still be engaged and active, it's that we want you to be engaged and active. Mm-hmm. And so you have somebody like Jerome Bettis, who not only won the MVP when the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, won that Super Bowl, but he won the he won it back to back as a running back. Emmett Smith in his first career won the MVP when the Dallas Cowboys were winning their championships, and then came back and won the disco ball with Dancing with the Stars. You're looking at athletes that are not only competing at the Olympic level and professional level, but they're exceeding. Jerome Bettis was the best player on the best team, and he was the one with asthma. You know, uh, Emmett Smith was the same way. He was the best player on the best team, and he was the one with asthma. Dennis Rodman, uh, David Robinson. I didn't realize all these folks were asthmatics. Of athletes, and I actually have pictures of these athletes in my clinic. And what it shows for parents who are saying, I'm afraid for my kid to play any type of sports because of their asthma. I'm afraid for them to go to gym or recess. And the first time a kid leaves the school in the back of an ambulance because of having an asthma attack, you can believe that's the last time they're going to engage in any type of physical activity. And so when you have a child who's sitting there and he's watching all his classmates go to recess in the gym, he's got to sit there. Not only is that bad for their physical development, but it's also bad for their psychosocial development because the last thing any child wants to feel is it's different. different. Yeah. And so what we teach them by putting these pictures of these athletes up there, we've got entertainers up there, we've got Eminem up there, we've got Jesse Jackson, we've got Bill Clinton, we've got pictures of all these people who have a comp, Lady Gaga, uh, and, and the list just goes on and on. You know, asthma is something that's in the fabric of our society. Hmm. And these people who certainly have the access and the resources to understand how to control it so that they can perform at the level that they do is what we're offering people who come to us is access to that same type of care, that same type of information that would allow them to be like these people that say, I didn't know you had asthma. So so how can folks get in contact with you or, or your clinic? You can call 414-393-4002. 393-4002, and where are you located? And I'm on the corner of 86 and Capitol. And I would certainly encourage people, even if they just have questions and they're not sure, because a lot of people have symptoms. They have this cough all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I wheeze, you know. I get short of breath when I go up a flight of stairs, okay. and they don't think anything of it, you know. And so it, nothing is done until it develops into a condition where now I'm in the emergency room because now something's really what, wrong. What are some other symptoms? So you talk about um, having difficulty going up a flight of stairs, um, having some wheeze, and um, what, what are some other So the primary symptoms that you're going to look for is, is going to be cough, wheezing, the shortness of breath, and the chest because you got these muscles in your chest that are running throughout your chest. And when you're having asthma symptoms or difficulties, these muscles are squeezing. So people will get a lot of chest tightness and they'll get a lot of chest pain. And the triggers that you're going to look for is when you're exerting yourself and at nighttime. So a lot of people don't recognize the connection between, like, allergies and asthma. And so you get this runny nose, stuffy nose, itchy, watery eyes. And the next thing you know, you're having trouble breathing. And so there's a connection there. And when I was talking about the complexity of evaluating asthma, one of the things that you have to take into consideration when you're evaluating and managing asthma is the allergy component because your airway starts at your nose. 
it runs all the way down to the bottom of your lungs. If you don't evaluate properly the allergy component and control it, you won't be able to completely control the asthma component. A lot of people, they come into the clinic and we're asking them what kind of heartburn problems do you have? And they have no idea why we're trying to investigate how often they have a heartburn or if they have reflux because they don't know that their stomach, their reflux, is tied into control of their asthma as well. And so all of these areas have to be investigated if you're going to get an accurate evaluation and the best management, the optimal management for that patient as well. Sounds great. Listen, um, I want to kind of tie in the, um, the diet and treatment for asthma care, but we're going to take this caller on um, first, and then we'll pick that part up. So Mama Rose, I've been waiting for days for Mama. Mama Rose, I thought you left me, Mama Rose. Mama Rose. Hello? Mama Rose, I thought you left me. I'm not Mama Rose. All right. Well, well, cousin, family, what's on your mind? (laughs) 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 Well, um, well, well, what I would ask the gentleman is, how about, uh, like, cleanliness? I have heard a lot of coaches that the, the, the wings, from the roach or whatever, it can set off an asthma attack, as well as if you're not changing your pillows and things of that nature. That uh, you had a dust mites that's in your pillows, and that you know, and those type of environmental factors can also set off. Because I had four children with asthma. Okay, so so the and dust it, mites, yeah, that's that's a big one. And where do dust mites come from? Dust mice is just a part of our world, just like mosquitoes and, you know, we, we have bugs. And so they live in our pillows and our mattresses and our carpets. And so dust mites are def- – it's a huge trigger for someone who has allergies to dust mites. So there's asthma and then there's allergic asthma. All right, and now. even okay. though most asthma, probably about 60, 70% roaches. of asthma. Roaches is a big component to them. Roaches with the wings and roaches mm. that real set off for the attack. Oh, absolutely. You said roaches with wings. Roaches. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all got flying roaches? Who? <laughs> but, um, yeah, cockroaches carry a protein um, that not only is a trigger for someone with asthma, but as we mentioned earlier, for that's an endogen or something. Yeah, it's, it's some, it can actually cause the development of someone who wouldn't be predisposed genetically to having asthma. And so she's absolutely right. You know, you want to mitigate a lot of those environmental factors. And so we do use dust mite proof covers for your mattress. There's dust mite proof covers for your pillows as well. Uh, there's air cleaners that people use to try to take a lot of the um, those particles in the air that it'll filter them out using a helper filter for vacuum cleaner and making sure that you keep the amount of dust. If you have a child or an individual, a child or adult, and you're alert, and we do allergy testing, and if you are strongly allergic to dust mites, then we will provide you with information for as much dust mite avoidance as gotcha. possible. So let's go back to this whole thing about treatment. How, what are the treatment modalities? How do you treat asthma? And let's weave diet back into this conversation. So what are the ways, because I, the way, what I'm thinking is that diet, I'm sorry, not diet, but that uh, asthma can't be cured. That is correct. Asthma cannot be cured. It can only be controlled. And so once you, can you grow out of it? Because I thought I've heard people say they've grown out of asthma. They had it when they were a kid, but now as an adult, they have they don't have it anymore. They don't have any symptoms or problems. What's going on? So asthma is something that there are a lot of myths. And so you just expose one of the biggest ones as far as growing out of asthma. Because asthma can come on at any age. So we have adult onset asthma, like when you're in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, is the first time that you develop asthma. But you never heard anybody say, I grew into my asthma. And asthma can go into a type of remission when you're 14, 15 years old, and you no longer have any symptoms. 
when you're 30, 40 years old, they can come back on just like the day they left, but you never heard anybody say I grew out of and back into my asthma. And so asthma has different populations. It has different ways that it's going to express itself. And everyone who grows out of asthma, they use that term. Well, first of all, you'd have to determine if it was actually asthma that they had to determine if that's something that they grew out of. Second of all, you'd have to determine did they actually go the asthma go into remission where they were not having symptoms? Or by the time they were 15, 16 years old, not only have they had this all their life, but they had this prenatally. They've never known normal breathing. Mm-hmm. And so maybe as the airways get larger, they're able to accommodate their asthma so that it doesn't bother them like it did before. That doesn't mean their asthma is gone, but if it bothers them less. So asthma has different expressions. Some people have it and it gets better as they get older. Some people have it, it gets worse as they get older. Some people don't get it until they get older. So you've got these different populations. And we picked this one where we thought when somebody had it when they was younger and as they got older, they said, I don't have it anymore and say they grew out of their asthma. But my uh, parents who come in with their kids, they're asking me all the time, you know, they're eight, nine years old. When do you think they'll grow out of their asthma? And most of the parents have asthma. And I tell them that if you could grow out of asthma, there would be no adults with it. Wow. You know, uh, so we can't grow out of asthma. We can only manage it, and you may have it, and then it goes away. And just say, say you had a formal diagnosis of asthma as a child, and then it went into re- what you call it, recession or, or remission, re- remission, mm-hmm. and then it resurfaced, could possibly starting to smoke at an early age trigger mm-hmm. asthma. Uh, yes, sir. Or because um, my grandmother, she loved to wear perfume, but she has an inhaler, and she'd be mm-hmm. smelling like a bottle, mm-hmm. a perfume, can't hardly breathe. But she's she going to church, she's smelling good, but she got the asthma pump with her. You know, so perfumes and colognes can also trigger. So when we start talking about managing your asthma care, mm-hmm. folks got to be mindful of those different things. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. Well, strong odors. And strong odors. what's okay. really tricky about because a lot of people have asthma, they have allergies. And after having runny noses and stuffy nose for years and years and years, eventually you really start to use your, you lose your sense of smell. Mm-hmm. And you don't smell things as well. So, you know, years ago, you know, a couple of dabs would do, you know, and I, hey, I smell pretty good. You know, as you start to lose, I need a couple more dabs. And then as you start to lose more of your sense of smell, you're putting it on until you can smell it. And you might be up to the half a bottle by then, but until you can smell it, you don't know you have it on. And so now you have something that's constantly triggering your problems breathing because you're trying to smell good. I had a mom that had a middle schooler. She was triggered by perfume. And I said, you wear perfume? Yeah, I, I wear it every day. Well, why do you do that? My mom puts it on me. Okay. You know, we, we got these attitudes. Of, My little girl, she should smell good when she goes to school. Yeah, but she should breathe good at all times. Right, right. So, But that's all an, an education piece right there. And I think that's really important because there's certain things that we can do that can counteract, you know, if we just gave them a breathing treatment or whatever, you know, and now we're spraying them down with perfume, you know, so that can kind of override what we're actually trying to do. Absolutely. Okay. So, so that's really interesting. So let's go back to um, how do you treat asthma? So you have short acting, long term, what? Yes. So the basis of everybody's asthma program should be, or the asthma management uh, medication should be a fast acting or what we call a rescue inhaler. And the one that we typically use here and worldwide is called albuterol. That comes in forms like a pro air or a ventilant. However, that should not be used to control that. It's called short acting. It's called rescue. They try to give it all these different names so that people understand this is something I only ask for a short time. This is something I only have, I should be using whenever I'm having symptoms. The long term control of medications, those are the ones that you would need to have to prevent symptoms from occurring, to prevent the inflammation from getting worse. And using a long-term control of medication is something that we would have to do on a daily basis. Well, you know, according to the Mayo Clinic, there's no asthma diet that will eliminate your symptoms, but your food choices may make your asthma worse or increase your risk of developing asthma. So they talk about taking more vitamin D in. They talk about eating plenty of fruits and vegetables. But there's something about sulfates, and what do you know about that, or do you agree or disagree with what they're saying? Talk talk to us. Yeah, so um, 
Absolutely, diet can have a huge influence and impact. Uh, sulfates are uh, ones that are found in uh, wines and beers. Some of the ones or shrimp. that are or shrimp uh, that are found on buffets. Uh, those things can absolutely be a trigger for asthma. And there's a whole list of foods uh, that we have that can Pickles. be triggers for asthma. But the important thing is that you recognize, like now we have a lot of peanut allergy you know, right. that's going on. Uh, we certainly have uh, a lot of lactose intolerance, uh, you know, as well. And so, absolutely, your diet is going to play into uh, any kind of chronic disease that you're trying to manage. The essential staple of management really starts with your medication plan and having the type of medication that's going to reduce the amount and frequency of symptoms that you're going to have and the severity as well. A lot of people rely on just that one inhaler, that rescue inhaler, mm -hmm. and they take a couple of puffs and they keep going. That's the worst way to manage asthma. Now, unless you have a pretty exclusive condition that's called exercise-induced asthma where there's no other trigger for your asthma except some extreme forms of exertion and exercise, that might be the only case where you only want to use your inhaler whenever you're having symptoms. But if you're using just this rescue inhaler to control your asthma, and if you're overusing it, then that's certainly going to be a sign that your asthma is poorly controlled and you're at a very big risk, not only from not surviving your asthma, but having long-term complications and breathing difficulties as a result of it. Let's talk about food coloring and dyes, because according to Mercola.com, mm -hmm. um, the use of these dyes, red number 40 and mm -hmm. yellow number 5 especially, have been linked to hyperactivity, ADHD, migraines, hives, and mm -hmm. asthma. So now I'm thinking about these flaming hots. I'm thinking about, right, a lot of these, mm -hmm. and, and you know, that's even red Kool-Aid. That's a number of things. So mm -hmm. Is is yeah, is is right. that that's true? That's so. I mean, that's basically the research that's out there. You agree with that? That that these yeah, dyes, these food that, color dyes, yeah, absolutely. And those were done. The red dye forty, the yellow dye. So, so and wait that's a been out there because I want to see how we mm -hmm. do this. I, I want to process this. So we sit down and give a breathing treatment to our son or daughter who has asthma, mm -hmm. and we're using uh, a gas stove at the house. We buy them cologne and perfume, but then we're also feeding them. Red flaming red hots. Mm -hmm. I, I don't and understand what are we do? are we killing and ammonia and bleach and, and pneumonia. Are we air killing? Freshener. Wow, you know. And so these oh, these, these are, are things that we can control. Though we don't have to buy the food cut these food. You know, flaming hots and the the, the funyuns with the red stuff on them. Even the Doritos because that's all red. Mm -hmm. So we can change our habits. And it would really behoove, especially wow. parents of children who have asthma to do the type of research that you've done. The best weapon that you have of controlling and combating this condition is being informed. And what we do is we empower our patients okay. by giving them information that they didn't have and giving them education. But what you did was you looked and you researched, and there are a lot of nuances. And when you look at all of the different influences that impact the development and progression of this disease, you see that there's so many elements that are involved and in how our behavior towards or our appreciation of the seriousness of this condition. And I think that's wow. a huge part that's missing in our community, telling your kid, you know, walk it off or don't worry about it, you know, go drink a glass of water or, you know, or whatever. Um, and our kids are dying. Our, our, our kids are dying at unprecedented rates. Right. In, in fact, African-American children, uh, they, one in six African-American children uh, have asthma, and African-American children have recently seen the greatest rise in asthma. Now, I don't have the numbers in terms of how many African children actually die from asthma, but it is a problem. And um, just this whole food piece, I'm going to give people some other examples of foods that they need to watch out for that's connected to, um, you, you have Skittles. You know, you got the red Skittles in there, mm -hmm. and different colors, blue and yellow, uh, Starburst, uh, Trident gum. You have things like the um, Toaster Strudels and Pop-Tarts, these things that our children love, Welcher fruit snacks. Um, 
These are things that we need to change our diet and what we're giving to our kids because all the food coloring that's involved. We're going to take a break. You listen to the Rise and Shine Morning Show, and we're going to be back on the other side, and hopefully James will be able to tell me the difference between COPD and asthma. Stay tuned. You need your 8 o'clock medicine? Take your 8 o'clock medicine. I don't know what your medication is. It may be synthetic. It might be natural. I don't know what you do. Maybe it's health. You just walk around the block. Whatever you need to do to get your day flowing and get into that uh, healthy mode, this is what I want you to do right now. It's 8.53 a.m. And we have in the studio with us today Mr. Uh, Dorian James, who is a certified uh, respiratory therapist. And we've been talking about asthma care and managing asthma. And I've learned a lot during this last hour, James. Mr. James is from the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center. And you can call him at 393-4002, 393-4002, if you have any additional questions or answers. And your clinic is located where? On the corner of 86 and Capitol, 8532 West Capitol Drive. All right, so let's talk about how will somebody know the difference between uh, asthma and COPD? And what does COPD stand for? So that's a good question. So COPD... That acronym, and people have heard it, stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. And although asthma is chronic and it is an obstructive pulmonary disease, we separate the two out because asthma, you can have totally normal lung function. COPD means you've lost a measure of lung function that you'll never get back. And you've lost a significant amount of lung function, typically greater than 30%. So once you reach that loss of lung function that's generally caused by cigarette smoking, uh, we used to have a lot more factories, people working in environments where they were inhaling a lot of particles that could cause this development of this lung disease, people who, painters who were inhaling these paint particles. Okay. Um, And so the one thing about asthma that a lot of people when they're younger aren't told or don't appreciate that if they continue to have asthma attacks frequently over a period of time, their lungs will change. It'll be like scarring or scar tissue develops inside the lungs. Okay. That eventually that asthma can then develop into COPD. So that's what I was going to ask you. Okay. Well, listen, we've had a great conversation. I appreciate folks who have called in today. We'll be back tomorrow on the Rise Shine Morning Show with Attorney Yang, and she's going to be coming and talking about uh, disability law and um, Social Security disability uh, claims and, and how those are processed and what lawyers do in their role of representing folks who have had their um, SSI um claim denied so uh thank you all for tuning in uh next is the forum with sherwin hughes and i'll be back tomorrow morning and again thank you mr dorian james for stopping by uh if folks would like to get in contact with you again they can call 393-4002 you all be well and be safe until next time